How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 11 in my programming leap motion with Python series. I know it's been a long time since I made a video for this tutorial series but hopefully I'll have it finished up today. I'm going to try to go on a tutorial tear and do as many as I can. Um, last video we went over, we kind of strayed away from getting data from each gesture and I gave you sort of a more practical use for the data we get which was determining the direction the user is doing that gesture and whether they're swiping up and down left or right you know which way they're drawing the circle stuff like that but now we're gonna go back to getting data from each gesture so uh, for this one we're gonna move on to the screen tap gesture which if I open up a new Google Chrome window so I'll just search screen oops screen tap gesture just to show you what the gesture looks like to give you a picture just to show you how to you know do this gesture which is right here so it's really just moving your hand forward with a finger extended I've done it with all fingers extended and sometimes it detects it better than just having your index finger extended kinda depends so let's actually get to work on coding this so to determine if it is a um, screen tap gesture, we're going to do an if statement, so if gesture dot type equals equals leap dot gesture, capital G on gesture dot type all in capitals underscore screen tap Unders or sorry, underscore screen underscore tap all of that in capitals and we're going to put a colon so what we're going to do as usual we are going to typecast our general gesture object to a more sp specific screen tap gesture so let's call this one screen tap and set it equal to screen tap gesture and then in the brackets we're going to pass in as our parameter gesture which for those of you who forget is the gesture we get from our frame. So, um, let's now that we got our screen tap gesture object. Let's actually get some data from this object. All we're gonna do is print this out. So, print. First thing we're gonna print out is the uh, ID. So, uh, screen tap. ID. So each individual screen taps has its own ID number. And this is the number we're going to print out. So it's going to be, like I said, a number. So we have to convert that to a string. So string. And for it, we're going to use gesture.id. We can get it from the general gesture object. And then we are going to pass in the state of our um, gesture. So for that, plus state, which we are going to get by self. So uh, this class, self dot state underscore names, and then we're going to pass in in square brackets as the index number, gesture dot state. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to print out will be the uh, position. So the position on the leap motion axis that the screen tap is detected at. So position uh, colon and um, in Java it was a vector object that was the position, but for uh, for um, Oops, sorry about that. I was just producing a video I did earlier. Um, for that, it's actually going to be a string that's returned. So plus screen tap dot position. But we're going to have to change that into a string. It was actually a vector in Java that we were using, but for this, we're going to have to turn it into a string. Uh, now, we are going to finally uh, print out the direction. So, a direction vector, which way the finger is moving. 
So plus direction colon and we are going to reference screen tap dot direction. All right, as long as I didn't make any mistakes, that should be everything. I'm already in the folder in PowerShell where I have this saved. I just got to remember what I called it, uh, Leap Motion App, okay? So let's launch this Leap Motion App.py. Oops, I forgot to put Python out in front. So Python Leap Motion App.py. Here we go. Let's run it. So motion sensor connected. I'm going to do our screen tap gesture. Okay, we got an error. We do. Um, oops, I forgot to convert this one to a string. My apologies. Like I said, in Java, we could just print out the vector, but you gotta convert it to a string in Python. So, control C. Let's rerun this. Let's do our screen tap gesture. There we go. Detected it. It's working flawlessly. Oops. Apparently I did a circle gesture there, but I promise you I did not. Um, so here we go. Let's, let's look at some of this. Each individual screen tap had a different ID number. So these are the different screen taps. Um, each of them had a state at end. Now, you'll look here with circles. Um, I don't know if we did it here. I don't think we did. I don't think I put the state out there for circles. No. But in circles, you'll have the start one. So the start is the first time that circle is detected. Then each consecutive one will be an update. So it's just updating the circle, like where you are on the circle. And then the end is when you stop drawing that circle. For a screen tap gesture, you're always going to be on state end because it only detects it once you do the tap. It doesn't detect it leading up to the tap. It only does it when the tap actually happens. So you're only going to have state end is the state. Um, but I just printed it out there just to show you. Uh, position, and that's the position on the uh, axis of the leap motion where the tap was detected. That's the direction my finger was going in. And that was all the data we printed out. That's really all the data there is for the uh, um, screen tap gesture in Python. There's a lot more you can do with it in Java, but unfortunately Python's not that, I don't know, not as good of a language for programming the leap motion in. But anyway, uh, that's all for this video. Next video, we will go over the key tap gesture, our last gesture to go over. But that, for now, that's all I got for you guys this time. Remember to leave a comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.